Hello everybody, Ranger Mark Mello here with the Blackstone River Valley National Historical Park and I would like to welcome you here to our sixth Ranger Chat. Today we're once again going to focus in on a lesser known figure in the history of the Blackstone River Valley. Now for some of you the name Elizabeth Buffum Chase might ring a bell and chances are if it does that's because you're familiar with uh, some of the social activism that she partook in in the 19th century. She was a leading abolitionist, and later after the American Civil War, became a leader in the women's suffrage movement. Chase and her family home in Valley Falls, Rhode Island, became a prominent stop on the Underground Railroad, aiding many fugitive slaves to freedom. Her husband, Samuel, who was also a Quaker, was the owner of the Valley Falls Mill. Now, the family lived very close to the mill in the mill village, and their children, in many ways, were exposed to the realities of mill villages. And this rang true, perhaps, the most with one of their daughters, Elizabeth, or her nickname was Lily. Lily Chase became a prominent advocate for the rights of working class people, especially for women and children. And in many ways, her little-known story played a pivotal role in helping those working-class women and children gain more rights in the workplace. Elizabeth, known as Lily Buffum Chase Wyman, was the seventh child of Samuel and Elizabeth Buffum Chase. The oldest daughter to survive to adulthood, Lily grew up under the strong Quaker influence of her father and mother. Young Lily had a passion for literature, undoubtedly encouraged by her parents. She read such abolitionist works as Uncle Tom's Cabin and William Lloyd Garrison's newspaper, The Liberator. After the American Civil War and the abolition of American slavery, Lily's famous mother turned her attention to women's suffrage. Although her mother was noted for her progressive work in the family's mill village, providing for adult education, and fostering the formation of kindergartens for workers' children, her daughter didn't think these steps went far enough. Growing up in the family home, Lily lived adjacent to her family's mill and village. There she became intimately aware of the plight of the working class. She especially became concerned for the women and children operatives in her father's mill. Lily, trying to reconcile her activist upbringing with her love of literature, became a writer. Lily published short, fictional stories which demonstrated the sad quality of life endured by mill operatives. Many of these mill workers were recent immigrants to the United States. These included French Canadians, Irish, and English. Her writings in the 1870s seemed to have inspired her mother to finally speak out on behalf of working class women at a conference in Buffalo, New York in 1881. However, Lily's biggest accomplishment was the publication of her book titled Poverty Grass. It was published by Houghton Mifflin Press in 1886. This collection of her short stories, which previously appeared in Atlantic Monthly Magazine, portrayed the harsh realities of mill life for working class women and children. In stories entitled Child of the State, Saint or Sinner, and A Stranger Yet at Home, Lily demonstrated the plight of women and children mill workers. In Child of the State, Lily warned, men and women who labor 11 hours a day in the stifling air of a great factory have limitations to their freedom of will. Drawing upon her first-hand experience as the daughter of a mill owner living in Valley Falls, the picture Lily painted was bleak. Perhaps her most damning attack came upon her own abolitionist parents. In Luke Gardner's love, Lily implicitly attacked her parents' indifference to the plight of their workers and their focus on the slaves of the American South. Lily feared the workers in her parents' mill were well on their way to becoming chattel slaves themselves. Lily summed up the purpose of her writing the best in the preface to her book. She admitted that if she did have a purpose or a motive, quote, it has been that I might help ever so slightly 
to make the fortunate ones of this world know the less happy ones well enough to sympathize with them." End quote. Much like her idol, Harriet Beecher Stowe, the author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, Lily hoped to make the plight of the worker known to her middle and upper class patrons who either were ignorant or turned a blind eye. Lily Chase Wyman sought to break down the class and cultural barriers between women, hoping that those more fortunate would reach out to those less fortunate to create a unity amongst all women everywhere. Lily Chase Wyman, very much a forgotten story in the history of the Blackstone River Valley, but a very important one, especially this year as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which granted women the right to vote. As always, thank you everybody for joining us. If you have any ideas of topics you'd like to see us cover in weeks ahead, uh, please leave those down in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. But with that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, everybody, and we'll see you out there along the Blackstone really soon.